the properties uh, of continuous time for your series. Now, these properties, they come uh, very handy. I mean, they, uh, these properties can be used to circumvent some of the algebra that you might require in evaluating the Fourier coefficient um, uh, for different periodic signals. So, uh, we will we'll, we'll just used uh, the definitions of the Fourier synthesis equation and then the analysis equation uh, to see how we can uh, uh, evaluate these Fourier coefficients directly, okay, in terms of the definitions of uh, Fourier coefficients and Fourier series expansion. So, uh, we'll use a shorthand notation to indicate the relationship between the periodic signal and its Fourier series coefficient, okay. So, uh, Specifically, you, uh, if xt is a periodic signal, then its Fourier series expansion, uh, we are going to indicate this by a double-sided arrow, okay, which implies that uh, uh, if you have uh, if you have a periodic signal, okay, then it can be expanded in terms of Fourier series. So it has a Fourier coefficient of ak, where ak is the strength of the kth harmonic in the uh, series expansion, okay. And similarly, if you are given the specification of uh, ak as the uh, Fourier coefficient, uh, well, then uh, this implies that this corresponds to the signal xt, okay, conversely. So, uh, so if xt is periodic signal with period t and fundamental frequency omega naught 2 pi by t, then uh, the Fourier series coefficient xt are denoted by a case, okay, so we'll use this notation to signify the pairing of periodic signal with the Fourier series coefficient, okay. So, for the, uh, for understanding the properties, uh, we're going to stick to this notation, okay that the uh, periodic signal is expressible in terms of uh, its Fourier series uh, coefficients, okay? And this is a one-to-one -one mapping, okay? So if you go, go, if you can go in the forward direction, you can go in the reverse direction. So these are equivalent specifications, okay? So even if, if you're given X, a, a, K, you should be able to go back and construct uh, X of T, okay? So that's how it is. Now, um, uh, now, so, now, so if uh, X, T is periodic, uh, with having Fourier coefficients of a k, then let's take another signal y t, uh, which is also periodic of the same period t, which has a Fourier series expansion coefficients b k. So we let x t and y t denote two periodic signals with period t and which have the Fourier series coefficients denoted by a k and b k. Okay, a k and b k are the strength of the kth harmonic. Now since both are periodic with the period t. It turns out that if you uh, make a linear combination of uh, x t and y t, as such, so you you make a new signal z of t out of it, uh, then the signal is again periodic. Okay, since both x and y are periodic signals, well, it is um, it's quite evident, it's quite obvious that uh, the relative signal z t is also periodic with period capital T. Okay, and it's in in, in uh, expanding its Fourier series, uh, you will see that the Fourier coefficients for the relative signal z t are given by CK, which is again the linear combination of the Fourier coefficients, okay? So you see that, uh, again, since both the signals have the same period T, it easily follows that any linear combination of the two signals will also be periodic with period T. Furthermore, the Fourier series coefficient CK of the linear combination of XT and YT given by ZT are given by the same linear combination of the Fourier series coefficients. But the proof is directly followed from the Fourier application of Fourier analysis equation. So look, if you have to evaluate CK for ZT, you can use this uh, Fourier uh, analysis equation to find a Fourier coefficient for ZT. And if you are going to substitute for <coughs> for ZT as uh, AXT plus BYT, okay, this is the signal, that's the linear combination of two periodic signals. Then uh, since integration is a linear operation, you can uh, bifurcate one integral into two. So you have two integrals, and you can see that this this is nothing but uh, the Fourier coefficients of the signal x t, which are denoted by a k. Okay, and this is being scaled by the scalar a over here. Okay, so this is being scaled by the scalar a. Similarly, this the second integral is going to give you the Fourier coefficients for the signal y t. Okay, and this is being scaled by the uh, coefficient b, okay, by the constant b. Therefore, therefore, uh, if you make a linear combination of two periodic signals, in this case, which were x t and y t, if you make a linear combination of uh, two periodic signals, scale them by certain by some constants. 
It turns out that the Fourier series in Fourier series expansion of such a signal which consists of linear combination of periodic signals, the Fourier coefficients are also the linear combination of their respective Fourier series coefficients. Okay, C case are also the uh, linear combination of Fourier series coefficient which are being scaled by the same scalars A and B, okay, which were scaling this input uh, signal, the X, T, and Y, T. Okay, so it, it just follows from the definition of uh, uh, Fourier series uh, analysis equation. And you, you also you should also note that this linearity property is easily extended to a linear combination of uh, any arbitrary number of signals with period T. I mean, you, you, can, you can go on adding more terms. So, for example, you can have another signal C of T or R of T, which is also periodic with period T, then you can say, you can write, you, you, you can argue that, okay, uh, since all these uh, linear combination uh, having three or more signals are periodic, the resulting sequence is also periodic, therefore it, it should be expressible in terms of uh, Fourier series. And the coefficients, they are going to be done, the, the, the coefficients going to be uh, in the, in, in the same manner, they're, they're, they're going to be the linear combination of the respective Fourier coefficients of the signals, okay? So this uh, linearity concept can be expanded to any arbitrary number of uh, periodic signals, okay? All right, then uh, the second property is time shifting. Now, uh, intuitively, when you uh, time shift a periodic signal, let's say xt, having period t of the signal, uh, the period t is a preserve, okay? So if you're going to time shift a periodic signal xt, uh, the period is going to be preserved, right? It's just the shifting of waveform, okay? So uh, the Fourier series coefficients bk of the resulting signal yt, xt minus t0, which is shifted, may be expressed as, okay, well, t0 can be a positive or negative quantity. It's a real quantity, t0. It just shows that xt is shifted. So if you're going to use the Fourier uh, analysis equation to find the coefficients, well, this is your y t, okay, and this is your coefficient, and you have to do this over one period. Period is the same, right? Frequency is the same. Omega naught is two pi by t. So the same equation for evaluation of the uh, Fourier coefficients, which we have used over here as well. So, uh, so just uh, you have to, uh, okay, if you carry carry out some algebra over here, uh, if you let tau equal to t minus t naught in that integral, and noting that the new variable will also range over the interval duration. Uh, the same period capital T, okay, so we are averaging this over the same interval. Uh, then we obtain, since this is T minus T naught is tau, you can express this uh, uh, integration variable T in terms of tau as well, okay, so this, okay, this is going to be tau as well. This is tau, this is tau, okay. Why? Because over here, if you see D tau, over here, if you look at this expression, D tau is DT, okay, D tau is DT. So uh, the other thing is, you can replace uh, t over here in terms of tau and t naught, okay, using this expression. So t can be replaced by tau plus t naught, which you are looking over here, okay. Then since the um, variable integration, variable of integration is, is tau, okay, so you can take uh, e minus jk omega naught t naught out. So you can take this uh, exponential, this one exponential can be taken out of the integration. Uh, without losing any generality or this, uh, without uh, affecting the solution. So you see that this part is, since tau is a dummy variable, okay, you can bring back t if you want. So this is this is nothing but the Fourier coefficient of uh, the periodic signal uh, xt. Okay, so let, if you denote this by ak, where k, ak is denoting the strength of the kth harmonic, okay, then this can be expressed as bk uh, in terms of ak, bk is nothing but e minus j omega naught t naught times ak. So that means if xt is a Fourier series expansion of ak, uh, if, if it is uh, expanded in terms of Fourier series and it has Fourier coefficients of ak, then uh, shifting, uh, applying a time shift to the same signal will result again in a periodic signal having the same period, which can, which is expand, which, which is expandable in terms of Fourier series, but it will have the coefficients of not ak but E minus J K omega naught T naught A K S. Okay, and one very important consequence of this uh, uh, property, it implies that the magnitudes of the Fourier coefficients they stay the same. Okay, the magnitudes stay the same. So uh, this can be seen from uh, looking at the Fourier coefficients B K and the relationship with A K. Okay, if you take the magnitude of both sides, the magnitude of exponential <coughs> is going to be one unity. Okay. It can, consists of sines and cosines, 
so it's going to be unity and uh, the magnitude stays the same okay the time period stays the same the magnitude of the Fourier coefficient stays the same but then there, there is a there is a phase term which is going to affect the, the phase the phase is different but the magnitude is the same okay the phase is going to be different so that's that, that's about the time shift then uh, then let's come to the time reversal third property of uh, Fourier series uh, now again the period t of the periodic signal xt also remains unchanged when the signal undergoes time reversal so if you're going to flip the signal around the vertical axis okay you're going to apply a certain transformation okay that uh, is going to shift your xt so the transformation is such that it's going to uh, yield a flip version of uh, uh, the signal around the vertical axis then uh, the time period is going is still going to be uh, the same it, it, it will be intact right it's not going this transformation is not going to affect the time period so to determine the Fourier series coefficients now for a new signal y t equal to x minus t let us consider the effect of time reversal on the synthesis equation so this is the Fourier synthesis equation for x minus t we have replaced this by since this is plus over here so a negative sign comes uh, uh, over the exponentials okay so if you make the substitution if you, uh, make the substitution as k equal to minus m since k is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity m is also a dummy variable it's going to be varying it's all it will also vary from minus infinity to plus infinity then k can substitute by minus m and then you can bring m over here so this is this is perfectly a new Fourier synthesis equation for not for xt but for x minus t and these are the Fourier coefficients okay so this a minus m becomes the Fourier coefficient so now it says that if uh, your xt is periodic and it has a Fourier series expansion having coefficients a k then time reversing the same signal is going to produce the Fourier coefficients of a minus k okay so we observe that the right hand side of this equation has the form of Fourier series synthesis for x minus t where the Fourier series coefficients b k's are simply time reversed okay the indices are time reverse so uh, this bk's are simply a minus k okay so in other words time reversal applies to the apply to the continuous time signal results in the time reversal of the corresponding sequence of Fourier series coefficients okay so they're also reflected for example a1 is a minus 1 okay similarly a minus 2 is a2 so there there, there, there again you have the time reversal in the Fourier coefficient of uh, time reverse uh, signal okay if you're going to apply the time reversal transformation to the signal that means that means you are also applying the same transformation to the Fourier series coefficients okay uh, they are going to be time reverse so a case will be time reverse like that this produce a minus k okay now which is, which is uh, shown over here so an interesting now interesting consequence of the time reversal property is that if xt is even well xt even means that x minus t is xt even if you were going to flip the, 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 the signal uh, it stays the same okay it's indistinguishable then it's Fourier series coefficients are also even okay are also even then uh, a minus k is a is a k right similarly if xt is odd that x minus t is minus x of t it becomes negative then so are the Fourier series coefficient okay so for our for, for, for an odd signal the Fourier series coefficient are also uh, are also odd okay if the signal is even the series coefficients are even if the signal is odd the Fourier series coefficients are also odd okay that's an important consequence of this property okay um, now uh, let's come to the fourth property time scaling uh, what happens in time scaling well the operation is as such that in general it changes the period of the underlying signal so specifically if xt is periodic with period t and fundamental frequency omega naught 2 pi by t uh, the next alpha of t where alpha is a positive and a real number is periodic with period t by alpha okay so if you're going to scale the time uh, instead of xt you have x alpha of t that means you are simply uh, increasing the frequency by the same multiple okay it will be alpha omega naught or the time period is going to be reduced by the same factor so time period is t by alpha and the fundamental frequency is a omega naught so this applies to all the harmonics okay now if you have this uh, uh, Fourier series expansion of xt in terms of Fourier series coefficients and the complex exponentials which is written as summation of ak okay multiply by e j k omega naught t so you see what happens is that uh, 
if you're going to scale this by alpha, then uh, this is simply going to scale all the harmonics uh, by alpha, okay? So the frequencies will be scaled by alpha over here. If you're going to introduce alpha, the time is scaled, okay? So this, this is uh, written over here as well. The time scaling operation applies directly to each of the harmonic component of the Fourier series of XT. So we, we, may, we may easily conclude that the Fourier coefficient for each of those components, they remain the same. That is, if XT has the Fourier series representation, then you can see that it's only the frequency that is being scaled, okay? Uh, the frequency is being scaled, uh, otherwise the Fourier coefficients, they stay the same. So this is the Fourier series representation of X alpha T. So again, we emphasize that while the Fourier series coefficients have not changed, the Fourier series expansion representation has changed because of the change in the fundamental frequency, okay? Uh, okay, let's uh, talk about another property, uh, it's mul multiplication, and you'll see a very important consequence of uh, multiplying two periodic signals. So, so suppose you have two uh, periodic signals x t and y t, and both are periodic with period t, and uh, both have Fourier series expansion, and x t has a Fourier series coefficient a k, y t has a Fourier series coefficient b k, and uh, since the product is also periodic with period t, we can expand this in Fourier series with Fourier series coefficients, call them h. So express in terms of those x, t, and y, t, the result is, so if you are going to multiply the two signals, okay, periodic signals having period t, the Fourier coefficients h is going to be given in terms of the discrete convolution of uh, the two Fourier coefficients. You see, this expression is exactly the discrete convolution of two sequences, okay. Fourier coefficients are, of course, they are, it's a sequence of, uh, it consists of the strengths of the harmonics, okay, K is, K or L is a dummy variable over here, so it doesn't matter, so, for example, L is, is just uh, denoting the harmonic index, right, so this happens to be the, if you multiply the two signals, then in terms of Fourier series coefficient, it means that the, the Fourier series coefficient expansion, the resulting Fourier series coefficient expansion will consist of Fourier series coefficients, which are, which uh, which can be computed by discrete time convolution of the respected Fourier series coefficients, okay, of x t and y t. So this can be seen, okay, over here. If you multiply the two, uh, the proof is quite simple. If you multiply two periodic signal x t y t, and uh, you replace their uh, x t y t by the definition in terms of Fourier series, uh, you can write it as such, okay. Again, a a of L is the Fourier coefficients belonging to X T. Uh, B B Ks are Fourier coefficients for Y T. Okay. Then uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can multiply these two terms, and you can get a one exponential. You can join two exponentials. So this is L plus M omega naught T. So the Fourier coefficients H K T uh, can be given by the Fourier analysis equation. Okay. If you if you look at this uh, expansion. Okay. Uh, well, the Fourier coefficient, again, with the same expression, you have to integrate this over the same time interval because the product is, uh, is periodic, again, over period t, so you take the average over the same period and integrate from 0 to t. So this expression, this expression comes over here, okay, uh, this, for, okay, this expression. This is the same that uh, uh, you've seen as a result of multiplication of two Fourier series of x, t, and y, t. Okay, then uh, we have another exponential e minus j k omega naught t, which is uh, it's coming from the Fourier analysis equation. So you can combine all, all three exponentials into one. Okay, so this expression can be written as such. You can you have just one exponential, and uh, since integration and summations are independent linear operations, you can bring the integration forward, and you can take uh, the summation is over m and l. Okay, so you can take the coefficients out of integration. Integration variable is t, so integration is over t. Then uh, you notice that this expression, we have, all, we have, we, we have already discussed uh, about this expression. What it says is that this, this is simply the, um, it denotes the uh, sines and cosines having period t over L plus m minus k, okay? And uh, in case, if uh, L plus m is equal to k, then that means uh, the exponential is having this, this, this exponential becomes e0 t, okay, right? Because L plus m minus k, L plus m is equal to k, so this is zero. So this integration reduces to capital T. Otherwise, otherwise, L plus m minus k are just integers, okay? 
So that implies that you, we are integrating sines and cosines over uh, um, integral number of wavelengths. Okay, the wavelength one wavelength has a period of t over l plus m minus k. So zero to t means we have we are including l plus m minus k number of wavelengths, right? And uh, the area over one period of a sine or a cosine function is zero. So integrating integrating over many such or integral number of wavelengths is going to produce the same result that is zero okay so if l plus m is not equal to k it's something else right uh, it's again an integer right then uh, that, that 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 then that also implies uh, integrating sine and cosine over uh, uh, multiple number of uh, periods so the result is going to be the same zero okay so if you're going to substitute this result, uh, this result over here, uh, it only makes sense for L plus M equal to K. So T comes over here and this T is going to cancel. So this term basically cancels with uh, this T in the denominator. And what you are left with is since uh, L plus M is equal to K, so you can uh, uh, write in terms of L that M is K minus L. So you can write the coefficient for B as BK minus L. And you can see this is nothing but the discrete time convolution of two Fourier coefficients. Okay, so it may be observed that the sum on the right hand side of this equation may be interpreted as the discrete time convolution of the sequence representing Fourier coefficients of x t and uh, the sequence representing the Fourier coefficients of y t. So basically, the two Fourier series coefficients uh, they are being discretely convoluted to produce another sequence h k which happens to be the Fourier coefficients of uh, the signal x t y t. Okay, so this is this is what it is. Okay, uh, then we have conjugation and conjugate symmetry. So now taking the complex of, I mean, product signal can be uh, in general going to be complex. Okay, if that is the case, then uh, if you take the co complex conjugate of product signal x t, that is an effect uh, of complex conjugation and time reversal both both conjugation and time reversal on the corresponding Fourier series coefficient. That is, if xt has a Fourier coefficient of ak, then you take the conjugate, that means that the Fourier coefficients are both time reverse and complex conjugated. This property is easily proved by applying the complex conjugation on both sides of Fourier synthesis equation and replacing the summation variable k by its negatives. Okay, so then again, if xt is expandable in terms of Fourier series, then uh, taking the conjugate, they take the conjugate of both sides, left hand side, right side of the equation. Uh, so th there's an equality over here, which means that either you can take the sum of all the harmonics with their strengths, then take the conjugate of the resulting uh, expression, whatever you have, or you can take the conjugation of the terms uh, which are to be summed up. It's the same thing, okay? Uh, which should be equal to, if you take the conjugate inside, it becomes a k star, then you have e minus j k omega naught t, okay? Now, this is not the Fourier expansion of x star t. In order to do that, you have to replace k by minus k, and this is done over here. So, if you replace k by minus k, or you can, you can bring some dummy variable as well, like minus m or so. This is shown over here. So, if you do that, k again is going to win from minus infinity to plus infinity, but uh, this minus k is going to be replaced by plus k, which is over here, and uh, this shows its effect over here, and this is the effect of uh, flipping or uh, time reversing the Fourier coefficients as well. So, for example, a1 is a minus 1 star, a2 is now a minus 2 star. So, if you're going to take the conjugate of the signal xt, x star t, that implies that the Fourier coefficients are both complex conjugated and time reversed okay then finally we we come down to the parseval relation for continuous time periodic signals if you recall parseval relation relates the energy of the signal again uh, for uh, continuous time periodic signals uh, this expression on the left hand side of this uh, equation is giving you the energy of the signal in one period okay because the integration is, do, is being done over one period so it's the average it's the average of this energy okay it's the average of the absolute integrability absolute uh, integral of xt so it, it's uh, this 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 is the energy of the signal in one period and you're taking the average okay so it, it represents the power of the signal in one period and uh, what the right hand side right hand side says is that this should be equal to the 
to the should, should be equal to the summation of the strengths of the call of the of the harmonics contained in the original signal xt okay now xt since xt is expandable in terms of Fourier series that means xt is going to consist of harmonics and those harmonics have the strengths denoted by a k's right so if you're going to sum up those strengths a k's uh, then that, that 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 should give you the measure of the power of the signal okay so this is what the partial relation is so where a k's are the Fourier series coefficient of xt t is the period of the signal so the left hand side above location is the average power since you're taking this uh, uh, average of the energy so that's again energy per unit time in one period that's the power so a k mod a k square is the average power in the kth harmonic component thus what perceval relation states is that <clears throat> the total average power in a periodic signal equals to the sum of the average powers in all of its harmonic component to show this property <clears throat> again we can uh, well we, we can bring the for instance equation so you see uh, modulus of xt can be broken up into xt and x star t and substituting xt by its Fourier series expansion over here uh, this is the substitution for this is this is x star t basically okay so uh, again x star t is a k star e minus j k omega naught t and uh, what you can do is since integration and uh, Summation are independent operation. Summation is over k discrete time indices, and integration is over continuous variable t. Uh, you can bring back the integration forward. You can bring integration forward. Okay, so this becomes one over t x t e minus j k omega naught t. So from here you can uh, write the expression as such. And uh, what you see over here is this is nothing but the Fourier coefficient of x t, which is given by a k. Okay, so this a k is is shown over here. And if you combine this, this becomes the power of the harmonics. It represents the power of the harmonics. Therefore, the power in one period is equal to the power of the harmonics that are contributing in the signal. Okay, so uh, that's partial evaluation. Partial evaluation is basically the uh, conservation of energy and power of the signal and stays there. It, uh, it has to be conserved. So that's all.